everyone welcome back to the channel today's video we're going to be talking about my one month plus review of the zephyrus g15 which was the highly recommended laptop from reddit in gaming laptops and several tech review sites such as in gadget and gizmodo particularly what i want to talk about is some of the quirks and issues that you may ha be having and especially how you could fix them um, so i'm just going to go straight ahead into one of the content so uh, one of the things that I didn't know about, but as I got used to testing it, but I didn't return it because this is one of the issues with the GeForce RTX is that if you want to record from your screen, if you don't have an external monitor, you're kind of going to be gimped or uh, performance loss to a degree when you're doing screen record uh, using OBS. So I'm going to flash it on screen right now. It's, uh, for those of you familiar with OBS, you want to do desktop only. And um, when you're doing a screen capture or stuff of that nature, and one of the things to actually get it working in the beginning is this setting called graphical settings. Now to get graphical settings working, you just type it in Windows. But when you go into OBS and you set it to be power saving mode, I found that when using OBS and trying to, if you're recording like I am or going to be streaming, you're going to get a hit in performance. Now, I'm going to be recording also externally from my A6000 just to showcase what happens um, to prove this point. But what happens is that I think there's an issue with using OBS to screen record and then moving into getting, uh, you know, the frame performance that you're looking to get from your external monitor. Um, so what happens here is you can see it's kind of choppy already let me just go into demo hero mode and let me pull up my frames per second so here also what theoretically could happen is that i don't get recordings oh, right so right now i'm getting about 40 frames per second if we look at the gpu the it says that it's using the gpu um, but it's not getting that great performance of what I would expect, which would be, be. You know, 144 plus. So in this settings and testings, I'm going to be showcasing various tests uh, that are different from the first video I made about a month ago. So these have the latest NVIDIA graphics. But what I wanted to point out here is that when testing on OBS settings, you can see here I'm getting 112 frames per second stuff of that nature i did find that doing 250 60 by 1440p on obs is not uh recommended so there are some issues uh it seems to be with this latest driver that you can't record full 1440p so i had to tone it down to 1080p and 30 fps per second so you can see here uh, despite having some graphics fps at least the recording came out fine. Now there were issues which I'll demonstrate in which the video didn't even come out well. It was very choppy and I, I, I think that's because of the resolution settings. So I had to tone down some of the settings again to go 1080p, 30fps in order to get a great output. Now we're going to get into how you could reduce your temperatures with these slight little tweaks. The next topic I want to cover is how to get better temperatures. So when I was testing these time spy scores, I was getting about roughly the same amount of performance in the 9000 range, but I was also getting around 90 degrees temperature. So one of the first things I did is do a registry edit, which you can find on the Reddit subreddit of the this device. And I'll leave a link from that, uh, those registry changes as well. But what it does is it adds this processor performance boost mode, and you can turn this setting off. So I was going from 90 to about uh, around 80, 75 degrees when benchmarking and testing some of the settings. And going to some of these tests that I got, still keeping around 8,000. So this one had the boost off and then different settings in the armory crate, which is another thing you'll have to test out for yourself. Um, but what I do now is I have this manual setting with the GPU set to these settings. So one thing that I find also helps with the temperature is installing Ryzen controller. And for the most part, the only setting I choose to mess with is this temperature limit. 
Um, I set mine to 90. You could get various settings from 85 to 80, but what it essentially does is throttle your CPU. And what that basically means is that instead of hitting 32,000 megahertz, you'll probably go down to like some interval of 800. And um, you may notice it when it starts throttling, your screen performance goes down. So um, something to keep in mind, there also are settings in here where you could download and load settings that people have set. So one that I've chosen is someone has set this temperature with different settings. Um, you could get performance and again, this depends on your machine of what you want to do. Now going into the actual performance that I got from the time spy, we can see I hit around 8,000. This is off the internal monitor with rising control at 60 turbo boost off set on performance, um, hit around 72 for the most part, um, 70 degrees Celsius. I could hit around 80 or 90 if I turn some other settings on. Um, so I think that for me, the machine, um, this is the settings that I've find using. Again, one thing that I'm kind of disappointed about is trying to record from OBS and record on the screen uh, as a content creator that kind of hurts some of the stuff that I want to do. Um, of course, I have that workaround in terms of if I was doing solo recording or on a game. Um, but some of the things you may find as problems is if you're trying to record uh, and showcase such as in this particular instance, record the screen and have an OBS recording of the screen. I again had to do the graphic settings and sometimes I get issues where it just shuts off during recording. So that could be very harmful if you're a streamer trying to record solo and you don't have an external device. I would definitely recommend investing in that if you're going to pick up this device and have an external monitor. So with that being said and pivoting into this next section, the last thing I want to talk about is the external monitor performance. So if I lift up this device, the settings I have here is that it has an HDMI output here, but I found that when connecting to this particular HDMI output, you're going to get the same issues of the graphic settings that I mentioned in part one of this video. Uh, you're going to have issues with, uh, you know, some choppiness, stuff of that nature. I mean, even now as I'm recording using the low power mode, I'm even seeing those performance issues in OBS. So again, I had to set OBS as power saving so that I could create this video of having content of what I want to record on the screen. Um, the workaround for this would be if I didn't want to record this laptop monitor screen with OBS. And for example, what I mean by that is if I bring OBS down, I'll get a little display effect, but this right corner here is how I do my content recording with a display capture and a video capture on the side. Now that's a problem because some people like doing laptop reviews and like doing screen recording options and they like using OBS. Um, so if you're doing, if that is in your wheelhouse of someone who needs to record your content um, and you want to record the content on your screen, doing OBS power saving mode just hurts your performance. So again, the recommendation for me, uh, my recommendation or my tweak is to not even use the HDMI, but to get an external one. So <laughs> mine's kind of scuffed up. I have a, two of them that I'm using, um, but something like a USB-C could work. And if you ex plug out to its USB-C or what I'm particularly using, um, if I could bring it on the screen, <laughs> is I'm just using this one that I got, which has a HDMI out and display port. That's how I'm getting kind of better performance uh, when recording content on screen is using not OBS power saving mode and not using um, the internal monitor, but I would actually just be recording a screen. Uh, but in terms of what, you know, what I need to do for this video, which is showcase the laptop and showcase, you know, what's on screen. Um, this is just something to consider. So this could affect people who, you know, perhaps don't have an external monitor, or maybe you're on the go and you want to make content and recording your screen. That's something you're going to have to keep in mind. If you don't have anything to plug into, but you want to, let's say, you know, you're working out of a hotel for some reason, or you're a mobile content creator and you want to record something, um, that's something to consider. And also the other fact is that it doesn't actually have a webcam. So depending on your needs, I particularly like using an iPhone as a webcam, but some people just like an all-in-one setup. 
So let's now pivot on to a recap of all of my findings that I have for this device. So overall, that concludes my review slash things that I kind of learned how to fix with this device. So one thing I'll say is that with this device, something you want to uh, consider using and why I like it as a content creator, despite all the issues that I listed is one is NVIDIA broadcast is a really quality uh, machine and uh, voice just plug in in general. Um, right now it's literally storming. I'm having thunderstorm warnings going off. I doubt uh, that you could hear some of the rain in this device as I'm making this content, um, but I prefer liking a device that has RTX. I like the slim profile and I like using NVIDIA broadcast um, to you know, be on the road making content. It not only helps with when I make content, but it helps with when I am, you know, on meetings and stuff of that nature. And I have some background noise. I can just always plug in, turn RTX on, uh, at least in the broadcast settings and remove that background noise. Now, despite even having, you know, issues with this graphic settings, setting OBS to low power saving mode and then even having that gimp your performance um there are workarounds that you can do to not actually have that happen that could involve you know not having display capture but using your know, windows capture so i know that can kind of hurt in your presentation going to be it's easier to just showcase your screen uh, but that's kind of the workaround you'll have to do if you want to use obs as a screen recording um, you're going to have to do low power saving mode. So that is um, overall some of the things that I found that have been issues with this device. But as I've learned to kind of fix them with the power options, the graphic settings, and then messing with the Army Crate, I think you guys will prefer using this device as a recommended pickup. Um, still a recommendation that I have as a con creator. And again, I didn't return this. We used to have an M1 wanted to have that gaming performance um, as soon as i did the registry edit stuff uh, things worked out well so that's been my kind of one month out review of the g15 thanks for uh following this channel and uh the support feel free to leave questions or if you have any recommendations or tweaks that i should look into for the benchmarking or any other settings i should do i am considering repacing uh, but right now i'm not kind of in the mood to do that right now so hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.